This is the Terraform file which we have created in our previous lecture that is vpc underscore ec2.tf. Over here we are providing some of the information like region that is AP South 1 and AMI. This is the AMI key pair. This is the one instance type and subnets and VPC CADR and CADR block for the subnet and availability zone for the subnet and many more. If you see these values, these values are mostly hard coded. How we can avoid providing hard coded values in our Terraform scripts? Hey guys, welcome to Velaxi Technologies. My name is Ravi Shankar. In this video, we are going to see how to use variables and outputs in Terraform. Initially, we will discuss about variables. Then we are going to see how we can use the output in the Terraform. Let's go back. So this is the Terraform script which is already available in my local system. So to use variables, we need to create a file called variable.tf. That is the requirement. For that, let me open the VS code. And let me open our folder, file, open folder. And it is under Velaxi Terraform, right? So Terraform. Okay, select this folder. And currently we have only vpc underscore ec2 which I have committed into our repository and also dot git ignore. Okay. Anyway, so we are going to talk about this one. So my requirement is I don't want to give the hard coded values over here. That is where I can create a new file that is variables.tf. Okay. So this is the file name I can mention and I need to specify the variable name and what is the value. So I'm going to name it as a variable. Okay, and variable name. Variables require one value that is label. So here I can able to give that region. So I'm going to just name it as a region. Over here I'm going to mention it as a default value of region that is AP South 1. Okay, so this is the region. And uh, if I go over here, so this is the file. Instead of over here, I can just give the where dot region. Okay, where dot region nothing but it looks for the variable file and in the variable file it goes for the region. So after dot whatever you have provided same thing you need to define over here. Let's take that if, if I give it as a location same thing I need to provide it over here where dot location. Anyway it is auto propagating because of our plugins. Okay, so you can use anything over here. Next thing is I want to change the AMI ID also as a variable. Then I can go over here. So variable and uh, I just name it as a AMI ID or a OS name for just a better understanding. I am giving the naming conventions like this. So default equal to I can give the value of this one. Okay. And uh, over there I can just copy this variable and I can specify the variable name over here that is where dot OS name. Okay. Similar way instance type also I don't want to provide it as a hard coded. So I will just give the new variable that is a variable and a instance type. Okay. It can be anything but I am giving instance type and a default value equal to t2 small. And the next thing. Even CADR also I can change. Before that I will change the where dot instance type. And similar way key name also I would like to change. So where dot key I can give and uh, I can go over here and specify the. Okay, it can be in any sequence, but uh, I am going to name it as a where key. Right, we have given as a key. So default equal to rtp minus 03 okay this is the key right so that is how you can specify so where dot key and where dot key okay key value has been specified so let me remove the extra spaces so yep so these are the variables and also i would like to change the cadr block as well so this is the one i am going to take it variable bpc CADR default value equal to the CADR which we would like to use it. Even I can give the variable name as a subnet CADR. Okay, subnet 1 dot CADR because later we are going to use the subnet 2. Default value can be something like this. Okay, 10 dot 1 dot 24 I can give. Okay, 
So these are the variables I'm going to use and I will just to replace this one with the CADR and don't give underscore maybe it will be giving some confusion so give hyphen terraform default modules also have the similar naming convention so let me replace it for better understanding so go here instance type is equal to where dot instance type and the next thing is this is the one right where dot vpc cadr and similar way over here where dot subnet 1.cadr minus cadr okay even availability zone for this one also i am going to change it so i will name it as a variable subnet aged and uh, default equal to this one and uh, let me go over here where dot subnet aged okay so we have given almost all the uh, values which are required and we have just changed it to the hard coded value to our variables file so let me save this file and what we have done is we just kept extra variable.tf file and all variables we have specified over here later point of time if i want to change something for this file then i just need to update the variable.tf file so that it will change maybe our key name or instance type or cadr whatever you wish to change you can just change the variable.tf file that is the advantage of this one. So let me open the new terminal and uh, let's try to execute it. So terraform init. So we are initializing it. Then terraform validate. It is also successful and it is a continuation of our previous video. So you just follow the previous ones to understand better. And if you have any challenges, please let me know. And this code has been updated in our GitHub repository and URLs has been shared in the description of this video. Now we'll plan for it. So Terraform plan. It is going to create seven resources as part of this requirement. Now Terraform apply. And before that one, I will just show you my AWS console. There is no running instances at this moment. So all are terminated. Even I forgot to show you the VPC. So this is the VPC. And uh, so far only one. And it is going to create the second one. Okay. Now let's go back and give yes to execute this one. So yes. So now it is actually going to create our resources. And uh, you can see the changes over here. So it is creating a new VPC that is 10.10 .10 series. And once it is created, you can see the new EC2 instance as well. Let's wait until it get created. All right, it has been completed. And let me go and check it out for the new system. Yes, this is the new system. And it is the series of 10.10.1.61, .10 which means that in our subnet, it has been created. So this is how you can use the variables so that it will be very handy where to change and what to change. Next thing is we want to get this information as a output file. Nothing but we have created a VPC and also EC2 instance. How it will be if I retrieve the IP address of my EC2 instance and how it will be if I get my VPC, VPC ID. So those kind of things you can retrieve with the help of output. Okay. So we'll add one more file called output over here. So Let's create a new file that is output.tf. To get the output of our public and private IP addresses of our instance, we need to define the output file. Output file expects a label. So I will name it as a public IP of demo server. Okay, something like this I will give. And you need to define even description you can use. So description. So this is the public ip so how do i know all these things it is just following the documentation or else uh, you can ask our friend that is chart gpt as well and to get the value so you can give the value and uh, here you need to define how to get the public ip of our instance for that let's go and ask our chart gpt because we just want to incorporate the artificial intelligence in our learning process that is the overall intention so i have just opened my chart GPT and uh, we'll look for how to get public and uh, private IPs of uh, 
EC2 using Terraform output output file. So I am just searching for this one and it gives the syntax what we need it. Okay, that is the advantage of asking chart GPT. So this is the output file it is saying that okay value is equal to AWS instance example dot public IP and private IP. Okay, so however we got the syntax which we want to get it. So let me take this one and uh, I will just give it over here. Anyway, value I have given and AWS instance. This example, we need to get the resource type of our EC2 instance. So to make you understand, let me go back to your VPC with the EC2 file. And here you can see resource. This is the resource type and resource name. So this is the one we need to give demo server. Okay, just to take this one and give it as a demo server dot public IP. We are retrieving the demo server dot public IP. Even we can get the private IP also similar way. That is private. And even I can change it as a private IP. Okay. This is how you can define and let me save this file and let's try to execute our script once again. Now it is not going to create our instance, but whatever it is created that instance output, it should be able to retrieve. So let me try to apply Terraform apply. You can see here private IP it is retrieving. Let's give S. Yes, it should also retrieve the public IP. Let's see. Okay, there is some mistake in the public IP. So we got it only private IP because we didn't allocate any public IP. You can go and check it out over here. So this is the EC2 instance and if I go and refresh it, there is no public IP. Now we'll try to allocate a public IP. So we'll ask our chat GPT again how to allocate a public IP. So I'm just searching for how to allocate a public IP to an EC2 instance while launching in Terraform file. So let's see. So there is an option associate public IP address. So that is what we need to use under AWS instance, which helps us to allocate a public IP. Let me take this one. Let me take this one and go back to our script and go to EC2 and uh, over here. Let me give this one. Let me give it as a associate public IP. Let's save this file and again apply for this. Yes to apply. So now we could see it is going to allocate a public IP to our EC2 instance and it will display in the outputs. By the way, it is destroying the existing EC2 instance and creating the new one. Alright, you can see the public and private IP addresses because we have allocated the public IP. Alright, that's all for this video. Before that, I will commit these files to our uh, remote repository. So git add dot. So again, git status. Now it is trying to add this dot terraform file as well, which we don't want to add as part of this one. Okay, anyway, I will just ignore this one and commit the code into our repository this repository url i am going to share it in the description of this video thank you and see you in the next video where we are going to create the kubernetes cluster by using the terraform see you in that interesting video